Now, in the previous video, uh, you may have noticed I only used matplotlib. I wasn't really mixing it with NumPy. And, well, you know, we've used NumPy to create uh, polynomial functions or polynomial curves, and we've used matplotlib to plot data. Well, what happens if I took these two things and merged them together? And that's what I'm going to do for this little video. Uh, so, I'm going to kind of do the refresher on uh, finding a curve with NumPy and uh, working through that. So again, I'm going to have to start by creating my curve with the NumPy polyfit function. And again, it just asks for an X and a Y. Fantastic. And uh, again, I always like to confirm what I'm doing. So I'm going to just come in with a print statement to print my curve. So I run this. Uh, I always forget that. Uh, so one of the things that I need to do is I do need to make sure that I'm uh, creating what level of a polynomial. In this case, this is a second degree polynomial function. Now I run it and that's what we see. We see the same data again, perfectly fine, fantastic. So we're going to continue with that same idea. Now I'm going to turn uh, this NumPy array into a polynomial function. So I'll create it again as poly and I'll go NumPy poly1d on that curve that I just created. Once again, just because I always do this, I'll make sure to print out my value. That way I can confirm what I see. And again, I should just see that uh, these numbers right here get printed attached to X's at various uh, power levels. Awesome, fantastic, we're great. So now with this, I wanna create new data that is going to effectively plot out the curve. And I'm going to go ahead and name uh, two new variables, new X and new Y. Now I'm creating them as lists, more specifically because I'm going to be adding to them. And I could be using the, uh, the X uh, that I've done before, but since I'm using, I'm creating new data and I'm going to be working with sort of new data, uh, I always like to make new variables. I don't want to manipulate X because then I may screw that up somewhere down the line. So in my case, I'll go in with a 4i in range. We'll start with 20 since we're dealing with 20 numbers. And new X will simply dot append uh, i, i plus 1. So uh, 1 to 20. Nothing terrible, n nothing crazy, nothing uh, outlandish, simple. But you might remember uh, that the uh, poly1d function is going to create a polynomial function. And that means that poly is a function. So if I came in and just did something like poly i plus 1, for example, and I run this, I see a bunch of numbers because I'm seeing what happens when I replace uh, the x in this formula with a one, what do I get? Well, I get sort of this value. And it's not a, you know necessarily a one because again, we're not saying, well, what's the value in the y axis? What we're saying is what, if I plugged in on this curve that I'm uh, expecting to visualize, visualize, if I plugged in an x equals one, then this is the value. This is the, the point uh, that would be on the curve. Okay, fantastic. So I want to take these numbers and I want to set them equal to, I like to call it calc, I'm calculating a value. So I always kind of work off of that. From here, this is where I want to go ahead and uh, new y dot append my data. So from here, I'll go in and just, uh, as always, I like to print out my data to confirm uh, everything that I'm seeing. and. Ah, uh, okay. So again, this is why I love print statements because they always, even though I'm thinking it's one thing, uh, you know, talking a mile a minute and I may accidentally make mistakes. That just is human nature. And in my case, uh, what happened was I appended Y. And if I sort of just kind of look at what my variables are doing, Y is a list of numbers. And if we look at what I just printed out, I've just printed out a list of a list of numbers. So, you know, this is again, why print statements are beneficial because then you can say, oh no, I, I had a mistake. Let me fix my mistake before it gets into, uh, you, then you don't know where the mistake happened. Uh, so in my case, go in, fix that Y to be my calc. And now when I print it, 
exactly what I should see. All of those numbers that we had printed uh, on their own lines, now they're printed inside of a list. Beautiful, fantastic. So what we can do with this is now I have an X, I have a Y. Well, I already know how to plot with matplotlib, so let's plot. So I'll come in and I'll say plt.plot my new X and my new Y. And I always, again, uh, I know Spider will show it for me, but just in case you're not using Spider, you're using some other programming uh, or uh, development environment that's not Spider, Idle, Sublime Text, whatever. I also still like to make sure I do the dot show because that is, that's more of the way to explicitly show it. So again, I'll go ahead and run this. And wouldn't you know it, there's my curve, but suddenly now it's so much smoother. Oh, beautiful. What's really crazy is we can actually start to add in multiple um, graphs or visualizations onto the same graph. So as of right now, I've just got my curve going on there. But plt.scatter x and y. So what this is going to do is it's first drawing my curve. Then it's going to say, well, go through the data points on X and Y and plot them in a scatter plot diagram. So if I run it this time, you can see that that's exactly what's happening. My curve and then each one of my data points. And as you can see, the data points were much more narrow going up and then going down. The curve being a curve. Ah, nice and smooth. What's really fun is this is where you could start to uh, really play around with your data because I, I sort of know what happens when, you know, X equals 10, you know, even if it's not going to be explicitly 10, it's going to be close to 10. It would be, again, it was like a, a eight point something. But what happens if I start to expand my data? Well, what happens if, you know, what would the curve sort of look like if I'm looking for X at 21 or 22 or 50? or 100. And if I curve, if I plot this curve out, you start to see, I'm seeing my data points, but if you imagine what was going on, they apex at about the, you know, X equaling 10, 11 spot, and then they slowly decline as X increases. This is the trend that we were seeing effectively, is as X increases after 10, it starts to slope downward, and if we were to continue to increase X, it just continues to slope down. We could actually do the same thing on the opposite end. So if I came in, say for example, this time and did negative 100 to 100, now I'm saying go to negative 100 all the way to 100. I plot this out. You see that I'm seeing that exact same curve going on here. So funny enough, interestingly enough, it goes down harder uh, on this end for the same amount of values, but all right, you can start to see, oh, well, there's our apex. So it's a way for you to uh, start to take your NumPy uh, values and your matplotlib va or visualizations and start to merge these points together and create something new.